Hey everybody, Jamie here. Just moved to a new camp. I got a few projects going on my dirt bike, some uh, upgrades I'm going to put on that. Going to work to figure out what's going on with that carburetor and uh, organize the trailer a little bit. I've got some projects with that going on. Probably finish my solar on the side. It's producing, but uh, I still have to do some more things to it. You can hear the dirt bikes in the background. It's a Sunday and this is a popular area for dirt bikes, which uh, I ain't mad at it all. It's good, clean fun. Uh, so I'm going to get to what I got going on, but in the meantime, I wanted to show you a conversation that Jilly put out during the van build that I think you'd really enjoy. She's a great gal, smart, has a powerful message. Uh, let's take a look. Yes, like I'm on top of my game. I just started my business. It's flourishing. Like I feel more confident and more worthy than I ever have in my entire life. And then we buy the van and I'm telling everyone about it and I'm feeling on top of the world. And then we buy the van and I sit in the van and I look at this empty, completely empty van and I go, shit, <laughs> I don't know how to do any of it. I don't know how, I, you guys, to give you an example, I thought a jigsaw was only a puzzle. Like that's how far I was from being able to do anything. And all of a sudden my story of not enoughness came up. I'm not good enough to do this. What was I thinking? What if he finds out that I'm like this failure and this phony? What, what if he judges me? And I started projecting onto him my own insecurities. And I don't know, has anyone here ever been around like a one-upper? Yeah, oh yeah, right? Those one-uppers, all it is is insecurity. They're trying to prove themselves. Well, that's who I became and that's not who I am. But that's who I became. Because I told myself over and over and over again that I wasn't good enough to do it, that I don't follow through, that I'll never be able to learn how to use power tools and run electrical and run plumbing, right? Like, and 10 months later, I stand before you as a woman who can do it all. Yes, right? <laughs> Thank you. Which is like, I'm so excited about it. But the, the thing is, if I, I decided, I decided when I started going down that no, not enoughness rabbit hole, I decided that I didn't want that to be my story anymore. That's not how I wanted to show up. That's not who I wanted to be and how I wanted to be in this world because my not enoughness and not believing in myself kept me, kept me from playing big, kept me from going after my dreams and kept me from living the potential that I knew that I could live. And now I'm here to tell you because I know that everyone struggles with this. And so I decided in that moment that what did good enough mean to me? And that's what I wanna challenge you today with. What does good enough mean to you? I decided that good enough to me meant I'm willing to try and I'm willing to learn and that's good enough. I'm willing to ask for help when I don't know what I'm doing. I'm willing to build cabinets four times over until I get it right. And I'm willing to do this over and over and over again because I'm willing to face my fear. And I'm willing to challenge myself. And the biggest thing is I'm willing to be wrong. Because we have spent our whole lives proving to ourselves why we're right. Why we're not good enough. Why we're not worthy. Why we're not that type of person that does that thing that we see other people doing. And the biggest thing is I've had to learn to be wrong. I've had to be learned to be wrong about myself so that I can step into the person that I'm meant to be. And so how would your life change if you decided today, even if it was just for the next 10 hours, okay, just for the rest of the day, that you decided that you would be open to being wrong about what you are capable of and what your limits are you agree with me, Mike? What if, how would that change your life? And that's a really powerful question. And so this is the thing though, however old you are, so like tell yourself how old you are right now. I'm 31, 
And I started this work probably like when I was 27. So I've been doing it for four years, okay? But for 27 years of my life, I found evidence of how I wasn't good enough, okay? But when we're little, when we're four years old, and this is when the dogs agree with me again, when you're four years old and someone asks you what you want to be when you grow up, okay? Does, who, will someone just give me an example? What's something that you wanted to be when you grew up? What do you say? Scientist. Scientist. Did you become a scientist? Okay. Thank you. This is great. Thank you. Okay. So when you're four years old, someone says, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a scientist. And you believe that you can do anything because at four you can, right? You are a blank canvas. You have all the potential in the world. And so I want to be a scientist. And you say it strong and you say it powerfully and then you're met with, wow, you must be really smart because being a scientist is really hard. You have to be really smart to make any money at being a scientist, right? And then all of a sudden, for the first time in your mind, you realize, oh, maybe a scientist, becoming a scientist is hard. And you make that neural connection in your brain. This comes down to like brain science. This is amazing. This is what I love to teach. Okay, so then you go on to the next day, right? And you share it again. And then all of a sudden you hear again that being a scientist, you have to be really smart but you went to kindergarten and you got your colors wrong. Shoot, if I can't even get my colors right, how am I ever gonna be a scientist? And then you make that neural connection again and again and again until it becomes so strong that it's like an iron rope. And, that, and so your brain just goes back and forth on that neural pathway, on that connection. But the great news is just like our bodies, when we don't feed it, we get weaker. When we don't feed that connection and that story and that narrative in our mind, when we don't feed it, it gets weaker. And so my challenge and my homework and what I want to gift you with is changing what, how you are good enough and how you are worthy. And how you do that, all right, and this is everybody's homework who's listening and who's here with me today, is you find five pieces of evidence in your life right now how you are good enough, smart enough, capable enough, strong enough, resilient enough, worthy enough. And you begin to do that every day. And as you do that every single day, that neural connection of you not being enough gets weaker and weaker and weaker until it becomes like these roads that we've been driving up and down, right? Bumpy and becomes potholy and impossible to drive up and down. And then you, you create a highway in your brain that's so smooth of believing in yourself and knowing that you have everything you need within you. And so what I want to leave you today with is that you are enough exactly as you are. And if you're listening, and if you're here with me, like, go ahead and put your hand over your heart real fast. Okay, and in your mind, or out loud, I invite you to say it out loud if you want to, right? You tell yourself, I am enough exactly as I am. I matter. I am significant. I belong no matter what. and I am worthy. When you truly believe that, when you breathe into that, when you say that, when you feel that, that's when change happens. And imagine if you knew that with your whole heart and your whole being and your whole existence, if you knew that everyone else around you struggled with the same thing that you did, we would all feel like we belong because you do. Thank you. So if you would like to learn more about me and what I do, connect with me, share your story, um, please find me on Instagram at Jilly Johnston Coaching. My website is jillyjohnston.com. I'll be with Reed and Carpentry today um, and throughout camp, and I'd love, love, love to connect with you. But 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this message with someone who needs it because that's when we make a message a movement is when we share it with the people who need it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks a lot, Jillian. I appreciate you coming out and uh, great message. Thank you.